the time to answer questions from three of, three of the designs for a diva family members. So the first one is from Clayton. Clayton says, so let's say they have a house for sale with a list of $50,000. Now, from my understanding, that 50,000 is only for the house itself and not including foundation, electrical, heating and air, delivery, etc. So I was hoping you can tell me, based off your experience, how much each of the things will raise the price of the original 50,000 the home is listed for. So I pulled out our closing paperwork because I'm really transparent. Now, Clayton and anyone else that's interested, what we pay may not be what you pay, right? You may find a home for 50,000 and your after delivery itemized items may be less than what we pay. We got brick underpinning. You may not get brick underpinning, right? we got a certain size deck etc you may have a smaller or a larger so your price may be more or it may be less however you're on the right track now two things that i want to answer for you you said if the home is listed at fifty thousand, so i want to clear that up if you've been viewing homes on the website and it says starts at fifty thousand. The home that you're looking at on the website is more than likely not 50000 Here's why. The home that you're looking at on the website has stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, real hardwood floors, um, extra cabinets that don't come with the house, um, just a lot of upgrades, right? If that home starts at 50,000, the 50,000 is the base price of that home. It is not in the all the bells and whistles that you see online is not included in that 50,000. What I found was I was looking at homes that started at 70,000, but the ones that were actually online were 90, sometimes 100,000 because of all of the upgrades that I was viewing as I looked at the home. Maybe it didn't have a regular window in the dining room, it had a floor to ceiling, so that was extra. Maybe it had beams in the ceiling. Those beams weren't standard, that was extra. Maybe it had um, a fancy hutch over the stove. That's not standard, right? Those are upgrades. So. If it says it starts at 50000 it probably does. It will. But that's the base price without all the bells and whistles. So you want to see clarity on, you want to know what you want in the home. And when you go in, you want to say, hey, I saw this home on the website. I know it starts at fifty. How much is this home if you're interested in the way it is? So you can get a clearer understanding of how much that home is actually gonna cost you. Now, the home that we purchased was uh, like $80,000 online uh, with all the bells and whistles, but we didn't get all the bells and whistles. We got the home that we view on the lot, the model home, just the way it was, okay? So that leads me to how much the cost was. So I have the itemized list here of what we paid for the home. So we got this model home for $68,000, okay? After set up delivery bricks, decks, um, plumbing, electrical, trim work, just all of the stuff that was included, our total payment to Clayton Homes was a little over ninety thousand dollars, so it was twenty, what, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, eighty-eight. So like twenty-two. 
Yeah, like $22,000 more. So say you get a home for $50,000, somewhere around seventy. dollars It could be a little more. It could be a little less. Now, your delivery might be less than my delivery because my delivery was from Alabama to Georgia. That could have been a factor on how much my delivery costs versus you got your home from Joe Blow Manufactured Home around the corner. So delivery may be cheaper, right? You may not get brick underpinning. We got blocks. You may not get block or brick underpinning, which is extra. It's an upgrade. You may just do the standard skirting. So you wouldn't pay anything for that, right? But well, we got blocks. Sorry about that. <laughs> I uh, ran out of space and had to go get another uh, SDK. Okay. So as I was saying, um, Clayton, yeah, so that was our cost. Um, our cost may not be your cost, it may be more, it may be less, but that will give you an idea of how much additional was added to the cost of our home. So I hope I've answered your question sufficiently. If not, please feel free to email, email me again and I'll, and I'll give you more detail. The next question is from Robin. Robin says, how long did the whole process take from getting a loan, finding the land, house, delivery, and moving. So that's a complicated question for us because we didn't have the typical experience. Ours took a little longer. We began looking for a home probably around the beginning of January. We found a land, the land and the home that we wanted to purchase. Uh, after getting pre-approved because um, we got pre-qualified and we entered a contract for the home around the end of January. So we had a 60 day close um, and where we should have closed around the end of March, it was April 1st before we closed, not on any fault of the realtor or the lender, excuse me, yeah, the realtor or the lender but the seller had some issues that they had to clear up before we could close. So we closed April 1st and we didn't move into our home until August 1st, I wanna say. It was August 1st. The first week in August is when we moved in. And there's a video, I'll put the card up here of our move-in experience. But it took so long because for the first 30 days after closing, again, we closed right around August, let's see. April 1st, we closed April 1st. Um, we, there were some, some things that had to be done. So after the close, it took about 30 days for Clayton Homes to work out the building permit with the city that we moved into. They had to get permits, they had to get, find out all the issues with coding, uh, determine what was needed. We actually, moved into a mobile home community. This is like a, a subdivision made up of only manufactured homes. It's not a trailer park. Um, manufactured trailer parks are have spaces that rent um, lots, right? And they tend to be really close and side by side. You know what a, tip, a trailer park looks like, right? This is an actual subdivision. so. Everyone has like a half acre lot, some more, some a little less. It's your own land. We're not purchasing it from the community. We're purchasing it from whoever owns this particular land, but it has a HOA out here, right? It's a lake community. Um, and for the most part, all of the manufactured homes that are in this community are taken care of, the yards are neat, um, and they've made upgrades and it looks really nice. So we're really happy about where we moved, but there, that's another video. There were a lot of things that they had to figure out. Um, things like how many feet, what was needed to place the home. So for instance, there's a certain amount of feet from the property line that the house has to be placed. For us, it was 60 feet from the front property line, 40 feet from the back, and then 10 feet on either side. 
Now, if you have a bigger property, then that's not a factor if those are the requirements. However, we um, have maybe around a half acre or so, maybe a little less. So they had to make sure that with the size of the home and the coding for where the house goes that they could make it happen. The land had to be graded. They had to determine if you needed concrete foundation or not, if you had to have brick or not as underpinning. Um, and so those requirements were found out and um, they were able to meet them. And so it took about a month to get the building permit. Once they got the building permit, then we had to deal with weather issues, right? That when they were able to come and grade the land, because we sit on an incline, they had a, to have a level space to put the, the mobile home and also lay the concrete foundation or the piers that the mobile home would sit on. And in between that time, we at times dealt with a week worth of rain. So we had a lot of things that felt like they were against us, but we were really patient. And through that process, we, we soon discovered that each contractor that came out did an amazing job and we were very happy. We knew that all things come to those who wait, good things come to those that wait, and we're very satisfied with how everything worked out. But to answer your question, it took about six months from when we entered the land home contract until we moved in. So every experience is the same. It wasn't the fault of Clayton Homes. It wasn't the fault of the land. We had issues with the seller and issues with the weather, which you can't fix, right? So we were patient and in six months we were in our home. Now the, the last question comes from Sat. Also, were there any hidden out of pocket fees or items that you had to pay for that couldn't be worth into the loan. So, to answer the first part of your question, there were no hidden fees. We entered into a legal contract. All of this is our closing paperwork. We entered into a legal contract and every single item that was paid for was itemized here for us. Even before closing, we sat down with Clayton Homes and we knew what had to be added, right? Uh, steps and decks, electrical, plumbing, setup and delivery, uh, inside trim, outside trim, all of those things had to be itemized. We chose for my husband to build our decks. So that wasn't included. Okay, but everything else was. If we had, we didn't get a driveway, we didn't need a driveway. And if we did, that could have been included in the cost as well as the decks, but my husband did the decks. So that's something that you want to consider. Maybe your significant other um, has skills, right? They can build the decks or they can do the driveway or you know, have a family member that has a concrete business that can lay your driveway or that can do your brickwork or whatever. You don't have to get the manufactured home to do any of those things. Maybe you just want them to deliver the home and you can have it set up on your own. You'll pay for those costs. Or maybe not if you want them to pay for it. Each one of those items is included in the total cost and you will know how much. You'll get an itemized list of how much each one of those things cost. Now I talk about what all of those things are in another video that I've already posted, I'll link that card here so you can go and watch um, the steps to buying the manufacturing home video. Now the last question that Satin had was also, did the lender require you to put a certain amount down because it was a land home package on the manufacturing home or did you go through a lender? Yes, I went through a lender. Um, the manufacturing home company, Clayton Homes, that we dealt with had two lenders that we got approved for. The lender that we chose, we did um, have to put a certain amount down. We put 10% down. What you put down, maybe more or it may be less, 
you may be required to put a certain amount or you may choose to put a certain amount, right? That depends on what we talked about earlier, down payment, what your credit score is, um, your what is your income versus your credit score, right? What you can afford to put down. So I'll give you some examples. Say you get approved for $100,000 and you're required to put down 10%, then you're gonna put $10,000 down. But if you're only required to put 5%, then you only have to pay $5,000 down. Or 3% would be what? $3,000 down. So it really depends on your credit versus income. You may be required to put 3% down and wanna put 10% down so you would have a smaller mortgage each month that's your choice but what your required amount is will depend on your credit and your income together or it could be you and your significant others combined income and credit now with a manufactured home and i could probably talk about this more in detail in another video but i will tell you that you know that they some manufactured home lenders will go as low as a 550 i think credit score it was on the wall like 550 to 850 will get you in a manufactured home um so um if you're going it alone or you're going it with a partner then that really helps to see how much you'll get approved for and what percentage you'll have to put in so that is the end of my questions, you guys. I hope I've answered them all. I actually sat and emailed me and I had already answered her, but I knew that there were some people, because I get these same questions a lot, I know there's some people that have even more questions. So if you do have more questions, my email information is in the description box below. Please be sure that you email me those questions. It works better to email them to me than to put them in the comments. You email them to me and I'll get a response back to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you know whenever I upload another video. Have a great evening and thank you for watching.